Welcome to the Christian Worship Hour with Pastor Harold E. Salem. The mission of the Christian Worship Hour is to share the good news of the gospel with a lost world and to encourage and equip Christians to pray for our families and our nations. Please join with us and the members of our church family as we study the incomparable Word of God. And stay tuned to learn more about how you can be a part of God's amazing plan to reach the world. We hope you will be blessed by today's program. I'm Pastor Salem, and I want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. And uh, this is a special service, a wonderful service, because tomorrow is Christmas Eve. And I just love Christmas Eve. And all of this month of December, we're talking about Jesus and of the birth of Jesus and the coming of Jesus. And it's just d filled with joy. And we're going to be looking about Jesus in the manger in Bethlehem. But first of all, let me share just a few of the letters that we have. We have one from Hamilton, Alabama. And this person writes, I enjoy your program every week. I'm an 80-year-old woman. I live alone. My husband has been dead 30 years. Your sermons are so uplifting. I'm sending a little donation and would like to have a new song and the film Heart of a Shepherd. I know I'll be blessed when I see it. A sister in Christ. And so she talks about two things. She says a new song. And that's a little Bible study we put out every month. And th this month it's a, for under you is born a Savior. And we have a study on that. And then uh, she talks about the heart of a shepherd. And that's an hour film. And it's how I came to know Jesus. And it talks about the way of salvation. So, And we send that out on a free will offering basis. And if you don't have anything, absolutely nothing, we'll send it to you and somebody else will help pay the way. It always works out that way. And so get your pencil and paper and at the close of the service, I'll tell you the address, I'll tell you where to write. And here's one we get from Taronga, New Zealand thousands of miles away and they worship with us and the minute I say a word here they have it there it's a, just wonderful and I really like New Zealand because I had a granddaughter uh, and uh, she uh, st studied in uh, New Zealand and she told her how what a beautiful country it was and how nice the people were to her so I want to thank all of you New Zealanders thank you for being making my granddaughter have such a wonderful experience Here's Billings, Montana. I'm thinking of the nautical term, uh, steady as she goes, and feel that's how you are helping me in my faith. And now I have a small stroke at 82. I'm homebound, chronic pain disease, and I need the fellowship of the saints. I look forward to seeing your service every Sunday. And so when you send your gifts to help this ministry, you help pop people that are shut-ins. There's some that just can't get out. It's the only church they have. And we always have and we always preach the word of God. We just put as much Bible in our verses, script, sermons as we possibly can. And that and blesses heart, blesses people, bless their heart. I have one more letter, and this is from Clitheral, Minnesota. And it says, please send three copies of the heart of a shepherd, a copy for myself and one for each of my daughters. God bless you. And so here's a good way to witness to people. And she's sending them to her daughters. And you know, we to need to tell others about Jesus. But sometimes that's hard to do. And when you take, for instance, your relatives, they're the hardest people to talk to. The hardest person I had to witness to is my dad. And he wasn't mad about it or anything, but it just was hard. Well, you give them these, they get these films, they get this film, A Heart of a Shepherd, and you can give them it, and that, and that tells a story. And it tells about accepting Jesus and opening their heart to the Lord. And yet we have many people give it to their family members. They give it to their neighbor. Maybe their neighbor really needs to know the Lord. And so you can just, just write to us, Get that pencil and paper ready. And if you want a dozen films or whatever you want, you just get that and get them out to people. And, they, and who knows who will come to the Lord. Could be any number. Well, we want to look at something here about the coming of the Lord. And when the, you remember when Jesus was born, the Magi, the wise men came. And they came and they said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? It doesn't say that he was born, born to be the king. 
But they says he's born king. He's the king of the Jews. This Messiah, this Jesus is the king. And how they knew it, I don't know. But they had their finger on the right thing. And so they say, where is he? And so we've been spending all this month on that. And we've said, first of all, we've seen him in the message of the prophets in the Old Testament, in the prophecy. And then we've seen him in the announcement of Gabriel uh, to Mary, but she's going to be with child. And God is going to favor her among all women and through whom to say she, he will send his son. And then we took last week, we took about the song of the, the message of the angels and how they brought that message to the shepherds. And now today, we're going to look at the manger of Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph lived and resided in Nazareth. And then one day we read in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 2, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so they finally arrived at Bethlehem. It was a distance of about 90 miles. And, but they have, were, were living in Nazareth, and they had to be in Bethlehem because the prophet said Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. And so was a, here's Caesar Augustus, and he puts the whole world in motion. So to bring that one woman into this city of Bethlehem to be born. They finally arrive in Bethlehem, and I always think about it as being late in the evening, but we don't know, really. We don't know when they got there. And there's a, a great uh, pastor, Philip uh, uh, Phillips, uh, Brooks, and uh, he wrote a lot of hymns. And one of the songs, the hymns, that he, hymns he wrote was, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and has this word, How Still We See Thee Lie. Well, it was a little sleepy little town, but now at this time of the year, it wasn't. It was pandemonium. It was filled with people because they're all coming because of the decree of the governor of the uh, Caesar Augustus, and they had a sign up in the city in which they originated. And so it was packed out, and they were so filled up that, that they couldn't find a place. And, by, and St. Luke says, there was no room for them in the inn. Everything was taken. There wasn't, you couldn't get it at any, at any price. And so they looked and they looked and they looked and they finally found a place, a barn or shed or something where the animals were kept. And then the hour came upon Mary that allows for no delay. And the little baby, be, Jesus, is born. The Bible tells us she brought forth. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes. She laid him in a manger. That's beautiful, beautiful, but oh, it's sad. See the loneliness of it all. She alone brought that baby forth. She alone wrapped up the swaddling clothes. Where's Joseph? I don't know. She laid him in the manger. And many think that she maybe was a teenager, no more than a teenager. And she's in this way off place with the animals. And this baby is born. And in that hour of all hours, when womanhood should be surrendered, surrounded by the tenderest of care, this Mary, Mary was all alone. God bless her. And then we see she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and she has no help doing that. And the swaddling clothes were just strips of cloth is what it was, just strips of cloth round around the little baby. St. Luke, Luke is telling us she is alone in the birth of her firstborn, and no one was there to help her. And when the child was born, she took care of him all by herself. Oh, Mary, God picked her, but she was willing to go. And she says, whatever God wants me to do, I'm willing to do it. And so here she's doing it. And I wonder maybe sometimes when, when Jesus talked about his mother, when Jesus said, a woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into this world. Well, that was the story of Mary. She brought forth her firstborn, brought him into this world. The firstborn of that family, but more than that, 
the firstborn of creation, the firstborn among brethren, the firstborn of God and man. What child is this? What child is this? He is different. He is unique. There never was one like him and there never will be again because he is God and he is man. He is God in the flesh, sinless flesh. And there never was a person like that, and there never will be again. And thus it was that God gave the most precious gift he had. When God gave his son, he took all of heaven. He gave the most precious thing he had, gave him as a gift. I remember reading a story about the old, uh, an old uh, story about the peanuts. Uh, peanuts, a, a comic strip on peanuts. And it's uh, Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown has just had to take a little hammer and broke open his bank. And he says, look, I've got $9.11 to spend on Christmas gifts. And Lucy, she's not very impressed. And she says, you can't buy something for everyone with $9.11. She says so that to Charlie Brown. And Charlie answers, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to try and Lucy has the last word, and she says, yeah, well, then you're going to be, uh, they're going to sure be cheap presents. But Charlie Brown isn't to be outdone. And he said something with conviction and something that means so much and we ought to all listen to. Nothing is cheap if it costs all you have. Nothing is cheap, cheap if it's all you've got. And that's what God did. He gave everything he had when he gave his only beloved son, his precious son. And he gave him as a gift to you and to me. Then the angel appears to, uh, to the shepherds who are frightened by the sight. And the angels say, fear not and don't be afraid because I bring you good tidings of great joy. And that's what God is always saying when he talks to these shepherds and he talks to them all, the, uh, gives the message to those uh, shepherds, just don't be afraid. There, don't, don't be afraid of tomorrow and don't be afraid of making decisions. Don't be afraid of death and don't be afraid of, te of uh, eternity because perfect love casteth out fear. And when we put our love in Jesus and he's so loving and he's so kind, and we just tell of him and we trust him. And this wonderful Jesus, he'll take away all of our fears and he'll give us peace and he'll give us strength. And I walked with Jesus for 87 years and I failed the Lord a lot of times, but he never failed me. And he's always taken me when I took him back, when I said, oh, I'm sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive my sins. He says in 1 John 1, 9, if we forgive, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so don't be afraid. And don't be afraid, for instance, because there is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. So Jesus Christ is born. It's Emmanuel. It is God with us. Can you imagine it? God is one of us. He's in the flesh without sin. He's shown himself among us. He walked among us, talked to us. And as John the Apostle says, we felt him, we touched him. Oh, and at the time of our Lord's birth, the angels made the birth announcement to the shepherds and it frightened them. Ha, da, ha, da. Ha, just all out of their boots. They just didn't know what to do. And as a result of that information, we read we read this, Luke 2, 15 and 16. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. One translation makes it, they ran to the village. They made haste uh, how far they traveled, we do not know. It must have been some distance because it says, go even unto Bethlehem. Not just go to here, but even unto Bethlehem. I don't, we don't know. But we read that when they arrived, uh, yeah, yet that night, or maybe it was the next day, we don't know. It really doesn't matter. They came, but they came with haste. 
And that's what we have to do. They obeyed the heavenly vision with haste. They left the sheep and went to the Savior. They put Jesus Christ first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. And that's the instructions that we get today. How do we handle it when the Lord asks us to do things? When he lays something upon our heart that we should we should do or stop doing and do we answer right away so they came and they witness witness something that very few people say see they witness something that you and I will never see with few see they witness Jesus as a baby and only for a little time he isn't a baby anymore He's a strong man who went to the cross and on the cross paid for our sins with his own blood. And when though he died, he was raised the third day and he's at the right hand of the throne of God right now. They saw this little baby Jesus. And there's something else that many, many people don't realize. And it's given to us in Hebrews 1 verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith and let all the angels of God worship him. And so you have the shepherds there. How many? I don't know. But I know that he says all the angels. God says this is such a tremendous thing. I don't want one or a dozen of you going. All of you go. Probably millions to worship the Savior. That's how important it was. And the big news was that God is with us. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Call his name Emmanuel. St. Matthew puts it this way. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us, Matthew 1, verse 22. That is what we call the incarnation. It's the coming down of God out of heaven and clothed in our flesh, this wonderful Savior. The incarnation means that God is with us. It means that God is among us. It means that God is reaching out to us. Just think, this God who framed the worlds and all of creation, he's reaching out to us. He's caring for us. He's loving for us. It means that God is reaching out to us right now. God has always done that when you think about it. You look at the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve walked with God until they sinned and then God reached out to them and clothed them with the animals. The tabernacle in the wilderness. Forty years they had that tabernacle with them in the wilderness. And there was always a glory there. They call it the Shekinah glory. A special glory of God. He wants to be among his people. In the temple in Jerusalem, the glory of God shines forth, indicating that his presence is there. He wants to be with his people. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, there he is again, and he just gets a glimpse of himself, and he is so dazzling and beautiful they can't look upon him. He wants to be with his people, the people. Now see the glory of God in the manger of Bethlehem. God is with us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we have to believe to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave him that we might receive him. God with us. At Christmas time we're called upon to open our hearts and lives to Christ. We're told to take him into our heart. We're told to give our life to him and turn from our sins. We're told that we need to have him because we have to have Christ. We need re. We need, he's reaching out to you and we have to respond by opening our heart to us. Reverend Donald R. J. Shelby illustrates it perfectly from an incident in World War II. He's stationed in London and a soldier was concluding his sentry duty Christmas morning and it had been a custom in other years for him to attend church every Christmas but he couldn't do it. He's here in the, in the areas, outlying areas of London and it's impossible for him to go to church. And so with some of his buddies, the soldier walked down the road that led into the city just as the dawn is breaking. And soon the soldiers 
come upon an old gravestone building over whose main entrance were carved the words Queen Anne's Orphanage. They decided to knock and see what kind of celebration was taking place. And in response to their knock, a matron comes to the door and she explains that the children were war off orphans and their parents had been killed in the bombings and they were little orphan people. The soldiers went inside just as the children were tumbling out of their beds. There was no Christmas tree and there were no presents. And the soldiers moved among the room, wishing the children a Merry Christmas and giving gifts for whatever they had in their pockets, a stick, a chewing gum, a lifesaver, a nickel, a dime, a pencil, a knife, a good luck charm. The soldiers did whatever they could do. And then this one soldier... Notice there was a little boy standing alone in the corner and he looked a lot like his own nephew back home and he approached and he asked the little boy, little guy, what do you want for Christmas? And the little boy replied, will you hold me? The soldier with tears brimming in his eyes picked up the boy, nestled him in his arms and held him close. Will you hold me? Don't we all say that? Dear God, just hold me. I'm hurting. I'm afraid. I'm alone. I'm lost. Dear God, just hold me. Dear God, just touch me. This is the first Christmas that I'm having when I won't have my spouse with me. This is the first Christmas we won't have our daughter, our son with us who went to heaven. This will be the first Christmas that I won't have my closest friend. Just dear God, hold me. This Christmas I have cancer. This Christmas I'm alone for the first time in my life. This, for, this Christmas I'm out of work. This Christmas I'm going through a divorce. This, we were, this Christmas I'm awake. I'm afraid to even stay awake. Dear God, just hold me. You shall call upon his name. Call his name Emmanuel. And God is with us. God is with us. He loves us. He wants to hold us. He wants us to draw close to him. He wants us to know that underneath are the everlasting arms. And so that's what Christmas is all about. It's God coming down to or out of heaven. It's God becoming flesh. It's become God becoming one of us without sin. It is God holding us to himself. And oh, my friend, I want to tell you this. He is not a God who is a million miles away. He's not a God who holds us at arm's length. He's not a God who's too busy for us or too concerned to talk to us. This God, he is a God who takes us by the, our hand, who lifts us up and ho holds us close to himself as that little boy and uh, holds him close to his heart. And what did Jesus say? My sheep hear my voice and, I, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Uh, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Come to Jesus, and he told us that him that cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. I've been in the ministry a lot of years, and I've seen people turn away from Jesus, but I've never seen it, ever seen a time or read a time in Scripture where Jesus turned anybody away. They did the turning. He loves you, wants you to come to him. He wants you to trust him. Think, thank God for Christmas. We can say as a little guy in the London orphanage, just hold me. Thank God for his goodness and his love that he wants, he wants to be close. He wants to be near. And right now, he wants you to open your heart to him. He wants to come into your heart. And there's something to say and you're saying. You're not hearing any voices or seeing any lights or anything like that. But there's just something. And you know I just want Jesus. And I want to be close to him. And I want him to be close to me. And I don't want anything else. But I just want Jesus. Well, then you just say, dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. And I ask you, come into my heart and take away my sins. And I'll turn from the best I can. I'll live for you. Thank you, Jesus. And he'll, oh, he'll take you in his arms. And he'll never leave you, never forsake you. And you'll be his child forever. And if you do that, you write to us. 
and we'll send you some literature if you write to us, the Christian Worship Hour. And the box is 2002, 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And if you want to, you can get us on christianworshiphour.com. And we need to have, you need to write to us, and we'll send you the new song, our little Bible study. We'll send you a list of all of the sermons and the scriptures so you can read them. We'll send, and, and, we'll, and you write to us, and we'll send you the, our film. And this film is going to bless you because it's a film that God has filled, is using all over the world. And you can give it to your friends and you can read it, for, watch it for yourself. And it will give you strength and help. You just ask Jesus to come into your heart. And then you write to us and, and then we need to have your help. You need to send us some gifts to keep this on. If you think this is something of the Lord, you got to support us. you got to help us. We're going on our f- almost 40 years. God has always provided for all of our needs, but every day is a new day. So you write to us. Here's the, our shortwave people, Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. Now I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all the shut-ins. I pray for those who are lonely. I pray rejoice for those who are accepting you. Lord, I'm praying for our brothers and sisters in Iran, in the persecuted church, and how they're living for you and they're dying for you, but you're holding them and you're taking them right into the gates of heaven. The moment they breathe their last year, their next breath is in heaven. And I pray for the young people, Lord, that you'll guide them and the children that they'll come to you and in all these things may you be honored in Jesus name amen all right now friends you have a wonderful Christmas tomorrow's Christmas have a wonderful day and if you have Jesus you'll have a wonderful day and just remember this we have Christmas because God loves us God loves you you say I'm a horrible sinner God hates your sin, but he paid for your sin on the cross with his own blood, and he wants you to ask him into his, your heart. You need to make that prayer right away. And want to all, all of you want to know that the Christian worship hour loves you, and that's why we work week after week after week. Oh, we'll tell somebody else. Somebody will come. And then I want you to know something that the Christian worship hour loves you, and I sure love you, and I just wish I could do a better job. I wish I could come and talk to every one of you personally. I wish I could just do anything in the world to get you to turn to Jesus. You need to say, like that little boy, dear Jesus, please hold me and he'll hold you. You make that prayer, ask him in your heart. And God bless you with a Merry Christmas. God bless you, everyone. You've been watching the Christian Worship Hour, the weekly broadcast that brings good news to the lost and encouragement to the believer. We hope that today's program has been a blessing in your life. Support our ministry by contacting us at the Christian Worship Hour. P.O. Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. Or visit us online at christianworshiphour.com. Be sure to join next week for another life-changing message from Pastor Salem.